tipping point here is, let's say, I don't know, right about here. So we're going to draw this. We're going to start drawing, actually, no, we're not. I'm going to start drawing right about here. Okay, that's going to be my start point. Just decided this arbitrarily. And now what I'd like you to do is go back to that first slide here where we talked about our actual vectors. So vector 1 is a velocity of 10 meters per second at 160 degrees. So what you want to do is you want to represent that on this image. So there are, there's graph paper at the front of the room. Okay, in the black um, paper stand, grab some, and I want you to try and draw this to scale. Uh, I'm going to use one square being equal to two meters per second. So I'd like you to take some time and draw the first vector, 10 meters per second at 160 degrees. You're going to need a ruler and a protractor. Go. So in my case, I measured out one square to be worth seven millimeters. Okay, it, it's, it's seven millimeters by seven millimeters. So in, instead of trying to figure out these squares, I'm just going to go that I knew that one square was going to be two meters per second. So seven millimeters times two is going to be, or sorry, seven millimeters times five is going to be 3.5 centimeters that I'm going to end up drawing. So I've drawn out my V1 here. This is V1. Now if we go back, we'll see that V2 was actually 8 meters per second at 210 degrees. Now, here's where it gets kind of interesting. My 160, okay, it starts from here. I made myself a little grid and I calculated 160 degrees. This becomes my starting point for my next vector. So I want to go 210 degrees in the next direction. So I'm going to make myself a little grid here just to show what I should be doing. 210 is going to be in the third quadrant. It is going to be 30 degrees plus 180. So what you're going to end up doing is you're going to turn your actual protractor upside down and you're just going to measure 30 degrees more from the 180. Okay, so it ends up being, you're going to be looking for something like 150 degrees. And that should give you your 210. So let's give that a try. So this is a rough estimate of what my second vector should look like. If we start from here, we'll notice that my second vector starting on that zero plane ends up going 210 degrees. Now we're going to measure out the third vector and the third vector starting point is going to be at the tip of the latest vector. So again we're going to make a little quadrant here and we want to go in a direction of 330 degrees from this tip. So again, we start at zero and we're going to end up somewhere in the fourth quadrant. Take a, take a bit, do this, and draw out your five meter per second vector at 330 degrees. So now I've drawn my third vector, V3. So if I want to determine what my resultant is going to be, I'm going to essentially start at the tip, or sorry, at the tail of my first vector, V1, and I'm going to end at the tip of my third vector, V3. So I want you to take a few moments to line this up and draw it out. Now, if you were to actually measure this in magnitude, so if I take my ruler and I measure this length, I come up with about 3.9 millimeters, or 39 millimeters, I should say. If I divide that 
by 7, I'm going to get roughly 12.4. Okay, so mathematically this works out to exactly what we calculated in terms of our magnitude. And now let's look at the direction. If I want to determine what the direction is here, if I look at this arrow, this arrow is pointing down. This arrow is pointing like so. Therefore, it's in the third quadrant. If I want to know what my alpha represents here, let's just draw out a grid. So let's go from here to here, and we see that if we actually expand this, this is the alpha that we calculated. That is 14.4 degrees. So in order to determine my theta, my overall direction for this vector, we know that the, the alpha is 14.4 degrees. We calculated that right here. But in order to find our theta, theta is going to then be equal to 180 degrees, in this case, plus the alpha. Because if we look back here, our alpha is basically 14.4 degrees below or added on to 180. 180 goes to here, but we need to go, we need to basically tack on that extra bit down here. So mathematically, our theta ends up being 180 degrees plus our alpha, which is equal to 180 plus 14.4 degrees. Theta will be equal to 194 degrees, or 194.4 degrees. And our, our basically our final answer is to that question, where is Beatrice in relation to her starting point? Well, Beatrice is now 12 meter, 12.4 meters per second. All right, so VR is going to be equal to 12.4 meters per second. That's the magnitude of her velocity at a direction of 194.4 degrees. So when you're looking at something mathematically like this, yes, there are a lot of steps. However, it's very easy to follow the recipe. Number one, you write out your givens. So in this case, we had three givens. You write them out. Number two, you find your X and Y components. using trig methods. You remember your units and your positive and negative signs because those are hugely important. Then you're going to find your resultant X and your resultant Y values. Then using the square root of the square and sum of both VRX and VRY, you can determine the magnitude of your resultant vector. Okay, magnitude, no direction. Then you're going to find your alpha. All right, and you use that doing the inverse of 10 times the absolute value of the y resultant over the x resultant. Once you find your alpha, you're going to draw out okay, your situation. You're going to draw it out graphically, which is, should prove your mathematics here. Okay, it should act, your, your diagram should always act as a proof of your mathematical computations. And then finally, you're going to determine, based on your drawing, what your theta 
or direction is. And then I guess really finally you're going to answer the question. You will have ample time to practice this. Good luck.